In case you have heard of all the component render modes in Blazor but don't know what they are, this video is exactly for you. We'll explore each render mode in Blazor, introducing them, discussing their usage, and we'll cover some examples in action. We'll start by using a default Blazor web app project, as we've been doing so far in this series. So let's get started. The first render mode we are going to see is static server-side rendering. By default, our Blazor components are statically rendered from the server. What this means is that as soon as a request is routed to our component, plain HTML will be rendered as a response from the server. And that's basically it. No state is maintained on the server. Static components are great when you do not need to handle UI events from users, but you only want to render some plain HTML. Most of the components in our default app are statically rendered, such as the home page, the weather page, or the layout component. But Blazor can actually enhance static components to make user interactions more responsive. For example, Blazor can enhance page navigation and form handling. Enhanced navigation in Blazor allows users to navigate between different pages or components within a Blazor application, while preserving the application's state. Users can transition between different views faster and smoother without full page reloads. What happens in the background is that Blazor intercepts the navigation and makes a fetch request to the server. Blazor receives the HTML from the server and then applies the needed changes to the DOM. Blazor enhances navigation by default, while forms can be optionally enhanced if you want to. Let us now take a look at streaming rendering. Streaming rendering allows your application to render parts of a web page or component as data becomes available from the server. This render mode is particularly useful when your page needs to perform some long asynchronous tasks before it fully renders, such as making a fetch request to an API or pulling data from the database. With streaming rendering in Blazor, the server starts sending HTML content to the client as soon as it's available rather than waiting for the entire page or component to be fully rendered. You usually see some placeholder content, like those loading dot 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 messages on the screen. This allows users to start interacting with the application sooner, even before the content is fully loaded. When the async tasks complete, then the rest of the content will be rendered. Streaming rendering is used on our weather page. If you refresh the page, you'll see this placeholder content loading dot 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 displayed. After a moment, the weather forecast data will then render on the screen. If we navigate to our code, we'll find that streaming rendering is enabled by applying this streaming rendering attribute. We can see below that we are specifying an if block. If we don't have the forecast data, the loading paragraph is rendered. Otherwise, we display a table with the weather forecast data. In our code block, we can observe an uninitialized async method, which is a method that is invoked when a component is initialized asynchronously. Here, we are simply simulating an asynchronous call using this task.delay method, and we are not making an API call or something like that. And then we are generating the data below. Once the data is generated, the component re-renders and the update becomes visible to the client. So as we saw earlier, initially we see the loading text displayed and after about half a second, the table with the data appears. Now let's explore how we can create fully interactive Blazor components capable of handling UI events from the browser. The two primary interactive render modes we have in Blazor are interactive server rendering and interactive WebAssembly rendering. Interactive server rendering manages UI events from the server via a WebSocket connection with the browser. Blazor transmits UI events to the server through this connection. Then Blazor updates the browser DOM with the rendered changes. 
Alternatively, Blazor components can utilize the interactive WebAssembly render mode for interactive rendering on the client side. In this mode, the component code is downloaded to the browser and executed client side using a WebAssembly based .NET runtime. In interactive server rendering, the server always requires an open connection with the browser, which may result in server costs or some latency. The second approach, interactive WebAssembly rendering, initially has a longer load time while the .NET runtime is downloaded, but once it's done, uh, it is cached, available for future use. And as a result, it offloads the entire workload from the server to the client. There is also a third interactive render mode that combines the strengths of the previous two modes. Interactive Outdoor Render Mode Components utilizing this mode are initially rendered from the server, while in the background the .NET WebAssembly runtime is downloaded. Upon completion of the download, the component automatically switches to WebAssembly-based rendering for future visits. So this page loads faster initially, as it's rendered from the server, but afterwards the workload is entirely offloaded to the client and no connection with the server is needed. Our default Blazor project has only one component that uses interactive server mode, which is our counter component. On top of the page, we can see that we are using this render mode, directive attribute, and we are specifying the interactivity to be of type interactive server. If we go to our counter page, uh, basically we, when we perform an on-click event on this button, we see that the counter increases, so the page is basically interactive. If you can go click on the page with the right of the mouse and go to inspect to use our developer tools here, I'm going to network. Let me reload the page and here we'll see a WebSocket connection which has a status of pending. What this basically means is that the WebSocket connection is opened with the server and is active. And if I go to another page, if I wait, wait a bit, we'll see here 16 seconds, comma 44. And basically this means that the WebSocket connection was opened for this amount of time. So whenever we use components that use uh, the interactive server rendering, the WebSocket connection is opened and then it's closed when we're not using it again. If I'm going back to the counter, we'll see another WebSocket connection being opened here. If I go back to another page, the WebSocket connection is was open for eight seconds, for about eight seconds. And our default Blazor project does not support the other two render modes, so the interactive WebAssembly rendering or the interactive auto render mode. So for this reason, we're going to need to create a new project. Let me just go to our menu above and create a new project. So we're going to create again a Blazor web app project. Click on next. I'm going to leave the name as it is and the location of the files. And here in this page now we have the option to select the interactivity type. So basically we have here the option to select, to set the interactivity of our project to none, to server, WebAssembly and auto. So basically the first one is the first render mode that we learned, which was the static server side rendering with no interactivity at all. The second one was the interactive server rendering, then the interactive WebAssembly rendering, and then the interactive auto rendering. For this project, I'm going to select the uh, interactive auto rendering. This project will give us the option also to check how the interactive WebAssembly rendering works so that I can show you these two types together. So I'm going to select this and next we have the option to choose the interactivity location. What this means is that as it is per page or component, this means that we're going to need to set up 
the interactivity of each page or each component. We specify it for each component one by one. If we set it to global, all of our components of our application will be set with the same interactivity with the interactive auto rendering in our case. So I'm gonna leave it per page or component and I'm gonna click on create to create our project. Okay, the project is being loaded. What we can see in our solution explorer is that basically here we have two projects. We have a server project and a client project. The server project contains all of our server code. And as you can see, this is similar to the project structure of our previous Blazor web app projects that we have been creating so far. And about the client project, the client project basically builds the code that's going to be downloaded on the browser and then that is going to run client side on the user's browser. So in the, we can just go and check to in program.cs in our server code, we can see that the interactivity is set to, so it's been in, it's enabled the interactive server rendering that, and the interactive web assembly rendering here. We can, if we would check what we have in our server project, we will see that the on, if we go to pages, we will see that all of our pages or all of our components are as before, except the counter page or the counter component. This happens because this component was the only component that we had also in our previous projects that is interactive. And for this reason, this is pushed down in the client project. If we check on pages, counter.razor, we see that here we have the counter component and basically all of the components or pages that we would want to be eventually run from the browser, we all we set this component, we place these components in our client project. We will see that by using this render mode, a directive attribute on top, we have set the interactivity to be interactive auto. So basically interactive auto rendering. And I'm just going to run the project firstly to see how this works. Okay, so we are in our home page. I'm gonna just inspect the page to open up the developer tools. And I'm going to network here. And if we try to go to our counter page, we'll see all of this stuff being downloaded, all of these libraries being downloaded. As you can see, this takes a while, but our page is actually interactive, the counter works. So what happened here? If we filter on WebSocket, we see that the WebSocket connection is opened. So we have a, a connection with the server here, but as well, if we go to WebAssembly here, all of these libraries from our client code are being downloaded. And the most important one on here on top, we see this .NET.native.wasm file, which is the .NET WebAssembly runtime. So this was being downloaded on the background and now it seems to be downloaded. So how this works, as we explained before, let me just go back to our homepage. We we'll, should see that the WebSocket connection here ended. It was open for 56 seconds, for about 56 seconds. But now if we go back to our counter page, the counter page is interactive but no other WebSocket connection was opened. No socket connection is actually active here. This happens because right now the components rendering switched from interactive server rendering basically to interactive WebAssembly rendering. Now all of the UI events that the user triggers will be handled on the browser's side because we downloaded this .NET WebAssembly runtime. And this is how the interactive auto rendering works. I'm going to go back to our project and I'm going to change, go to the counter page 
and change the interactivity to be interactive web assembly so that you will see the difference let me just run the project okay let me go back here and refresh i think i'm gonna need to basically clear this storage data so that we'll see everything that's being downloaded there so if i go to the counter page the counter is not at first interactive this happens because the load time of the component is a bit bigger in the interactive web assembly rendering because all of this stuff were being downloaded in the background when all of these libraries and this .NET WebAssembly runtime finished downloading, then the component became interactive. So all of the UI events were handled then by, our, by Blazor from the user's browser. So this is, was actually the drawback of the interactive WebAssembly rendering because at first the load time is a, bit, is a bit longer but once everything was finished and the runtime is finished then uh, this is cached and the user events will be then handled faster from the client's browser and if we actually check the WebSocket connection will see no socket connect WebSocket connection was initialized because a server connection is not needed in this type of interactivity. If you enjoyed this video, you can continue watching my other videos in the Blazor series, which you can find linked on the screen. If you got value from the video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel or give the video a like. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you soon.